extreme shock. Oh, uh, no doubt about it. Um, uh, Americans uh, from one end of the country to the other are on the telephone right now, are actually trying to get a call through to um, uh, any relative or friend they may have who lives in New York, uh, Pittsburgh, Washington, to make sure they're okay. I myself have received calls here in London because people knew I was flying out of Boston, um, and I have made calls myself. Um, I think once um, the initial um, shock wears away, um, there will probably be some um, serious thought given among the public in the United States to um, its country's policies in the Middle East. Um, this is a subject Americans do not focus on at all. Um, the current administration, the Bush administration, has not made the Middle East peace process this, uh, the kind of priority that its predecessor, the Clinton administration, did. Um, uh, Secretary of State Powell has uh, been faulted um, in the American press uh, for not getting more deeply involved in the Middle East. Um, Americans have tuned out of the Middle East, so um, th this event has come out of nowhere as far as most Americans are concerned. They don't, um, by the way, they don't think th of themselves as being particularly um, biased in favor of one party or another in the Middle East um, uh, conflict right now. Um, their sympathies may on the whole lie with Israel, um, but in fact, uh, they don't think of their country as the great Satan that is fomenting evil throughout the Middle East. They think of themselves as being caught between two perpetually warring parties. Yeah, Don, are you saying there that it's a failure of the new president's uh, Middle East policy, which, which may have added to this? John, let's uh, hold there for a sec. Let's hear from Rudolph Giuliani, the mayor of New York City. I could see that there were going to. There's no question there are going to be significant casualties to our uh, emergency personnel. What, it's terrible. What do you say to the residents of New York City right now? Clearly, Manhattan has been locked down, and the, the transportation well, for, in and out is 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 shut off. It, it, First of all, anyone in, in southern Manhattan should um, should just head north, just get beyond Canal Street, even further north. Not only will, is it safer because the smoke condition is still very bad, but it will help us in the emergency efforts if we clear out southern Manhattan, Canal Street south. Everyone should just leave and walk out and walk north, and therefore we'll be able to get the hundreds and hundreds of ambulances that we have to get in and then take people to emergency hospitals out as fast as possible so we can save as many lives as possible to the rest of the people in the city of New York and just um, pray and uh, things are safe and things are secure right now and let's keep uh, hoping and praying that the casualties are kept to the smallest number uh, possible. We've put out the appeal, Mr. Mayor, for blood donations uh, from people nationwide, uh, but what else can people do to be helpful? Any people, any, anyone that has emergency uh, techniques or uh, emergency uh, expertise uh, can volunteer. Uh, volunteer at the ho local hospitals, uh, volunteer to give blood. We're going we're gonna to need blood. We have uh, over 170 hospitals in the city of New York. We're going to utilize virtually every single one of them and the hospitals in the surrounding areas. So anyone that believes that they can uh, donate blood, I'll give you at least one location, 153 East 53rd Street, that's 66 in Amsterdam. Uh, the Red, Red Cross actually is at 66 in Amsterdam. So people can volunteer there or they can go to 153 East 53rd Street and give blood. That would help a great deal. We're gonna, the hospitals are gonna need are going to need blood if, if people have background medical backgrounds and they volunteer at the hospitals that would that would help particularly later this afternoon when the people working there i was just on the phone with st vincent's hospital that's under obviously great stress because they're right right there they're, they're the closest hospital but every hospital is going to need help we've had reports mr mayor and i don't want to overstate this but there has been report reports have been reports from some of our people in the field of of a sense of panic beginning to build of a run on groceries and so forth what can you do there's no no down? there's no reason at all for anyone to panic uh, the uh, airspace around new york city is now uh, secure the federal government has cut off uh, any flights uh, the fact is that uh, the city of new york is safe right now it's secure people should not panic and they should just go about their lives and they should have confidence in in america and in american democracy we're going to we're going to overcome this and we're going to prevail we're going to find out i'm sure our government's going to find out who did it and we're going to make an example of you know of course there was the uh, the mayoral uh, primary 
uh, and, and other primaries here in the city of New York. Uh, those have been, uh, we understand, canceled. Yes, Governor, Governor Pataki and I uh, decided about two hours ago that it, that it did not make sense today to have a, an election going on. Uh, among other things, we needed the police uh, personnel that are used during the primary to focus on on uh, this rescue effort and assisting each other. Where were you when this terrible episode began? And, and uh, well, when I first was notified, I was in Midtown Manhattan, and I rushed down and saw a good deal of it with my own eyes. Uh, saw the, the damage that was done to the World Trade Center. Saw people jumping from the top of the building. And then we were in 75 Barclay Street, where we set up a temporary command post, and, and then we were hit by the debris from the collapse of uh, the Trade Center, and were trapped in the building for uh, for a short while then had to evacuate 75 barclay street is that your command center that actually was a ground floor uh, area right next to it uh we were using a ground floor area as a temporary command center so that we could be close to where the um, rescue efforts were taking place and uh, as we were setting up we were on the phone talking to the, the governor and the white house and uh, the, the building collapsed and we had to evacuate through the basement it was um, it, it was pretty dicey for a while. Uh, from your long years ex of experience at the Justice Department, you are uh, not only familiar with uh, uh, with trying to govern Manhattan, but also familiar with the operation of of terrorist cells. Uh, what do you say to the people who inflicted this this terrible attack on America? I have no doubt that we're going to find out who's responsible for this, and that we're going to uh, make an example out of it. And I believe that uh, ultimately the strength of American democracy will, will prevail. We have to have confidence in ourselves now, and we have to have a sense that uh, our government, a government of democracy and laws, is the future of this world, not this kind of horrible, awful, inhumane uh, way of acting. And I'm sure we'll find out who's responsible for it and make an example out of them. Rudy Giuliani, the mayor of New York City, joining us live by telephone. Thanks very Thank you. much. Thank you. And that's good to see of uh, Fox TV, Rolf Gili Giuliani. And this is Talk Sports, John Driscoll and Mike Parry with the, the dreadful news of the, the multiple terrorist attacks on the United States of America. 266 people were on the four planes that were crashed, two of them, of course, into the World Trade Center, the Twin Towers, one into the Pentagon and uh, one that was brought down and uh, details of how that was brought down exactly uh, are yet to be uh, filled in. It was about 80 miles south of Pittsburgh. Now we've been watching TV pictures here from uh, the various American news networks and you see people walking away from the rubble. They look like ghosts because the, the rubble that covers them, their faces, they just look completely grey and washed away and uh, they got to say it's a strange thing to say they're the lucky ones who have managed to get out with their lives intact john i've seen some images on our monitors today unlike i've ever seen before they were gruesome they were horrible people throwing themselves off the top of the um, world trade center for fear of being burned they had two choices throw yourself to the ground or be burnt where you are pathetically one man was waving a towel out of the window trying to attract the attention of rescuers but he was a few thousand feet up in the air at the top of the world trade center building no hope for him the other terrible images were to see people fleeing down a suburban street in New York as one of the towers collapsed and there was a there was a tidal wave of rubble following him down the street boulders bricks smoke fire following him down the street I don't think he could have survived because the cameraman who seemed to be filming this he didn't seem to have survived either it engulfed everybody well let's get some eyewitness accounts from the the World Trade Center Tom Roskin was there and he helped some of the survivors out of the debris of the World Trade Center there's a lot of fire, a lot of debris. Part of the facade of the World Trade Center is all brought down uh, and hanging there in an eerie type of sight that you would expect to see in a movie. Fire is burning around it. Emergency crews are staged in the area but can't get close to it because of the fire and the chance that the debris may come down. What can we expect to happen next? Well, after they search for survivors, possible survivors, what uh, will happen is the FBI will take over the investigation. The FBI will launch a massive investigation, as the president has told us this morning, which uh, will definitely go up to Boston, where the planes originated, and uh, thereafter go wherever the trail may lead. You're familiar with, with the way the city handles these types of terrorist attacks. You handled the, the last bombing at the World Trade Center. What What's going on right now in, in, in the hearts and minds of New York City's finest? Well, what's going on is trying to rescue those people who may be left behind uh, underneath the rubble, around the area, people who have been hurt. Hospitals have uh, gone to a full state of alert in their triage areas. A block from here, we have a firehouse that is acting as 
has a triage area so people can go in there and be treated with medical personnel. The city is on a high state of alert relative to the medical uh, casualties that we may have. Do we have to, to work under the assumption that this is not the end? Is that the way the police department and everyone, all the other agencies handle this? Well, the military has gone on their highest state of alert. It, we don't know if it's over. We don't know. We know that all planes have been grounded throughout the country at this point in time. And thereafter, each step that uh, has been planned for will take effect. A lot of people might say, well, New York City should have been ready for this. The, the police department, everybody else should have known that something like this might happen. Was the department prepared? Did it have a plan in place? There were, the, the, the city constantly trains and retrains. The Office of Emergency Management does nothing but train and retrain and get ready for something like this. But we live in a very free society where our gates are open, where people come in and visit. Terrorism has always been a possibility in the United United States because we don't live under the tight control of other countries. So a plane hitting the World Trade Center or two planes hitting the World Trade Center was something that could happen. They are trained for it. I don't think that anyone would ever expect it to happen. Two planes in one day in one city, another plane to hit the Pentagon, another plane to crash in Philadelphia. Let's go live now to the Prime Minister Tony Blair. Terror, which has engulfed so many innocent people. We've offered President Bush and the American people, our solidarity, our profound sympathy, and our prayers. But it is plain that citizens of many countries around the world, including Britain, will have been caught up in this terror. I have just chaired an emergency meeting of the British government's Civil Contingencies Committee, and I would like to explain some of the measures that we have agreed to take here. There are a range of precautionary measures. We have stepped up security at airports to the highest levels. No flights will take off from the United Kingdom, for which we cannot apply the highest standards of security for air crew and passengers. Private flights have been stopped except where specifically authorized. Flight paths into London have been changed, so there will be no civil overflights of central London. Security has been increased across the full range of government buildings and military premises. The police across the whole of the UK are on full alert. All our defence facilities around the world have been moved to high alert to ensure the protection of British service personnel. Advice has been given to major financial and business institutions about appropriate security measures. A number of other security measures have been taken and of course, we are in close touch with US, European and other allies and are cooperating with them on issues of security. All relevant ministers remain in communication and the committee, the Civil Contingencies Committee, will meet again tomorrow at 8 a.m. Obviously, some of these measures, not least the effect upon airports, will lead to some disruption. And I hope you will understand that. But other than the specific measures we have taken, or that we have advised others to take, business and everyday life can continue as normal. As for those that carried out these attacks, there are no adequate words of condemnation. Their barbarism will stand as their shame for all eternity. As I said earlier, this mass terrorism is the new evil in our world. The people who perpetrate it have no regard whatever for the sanctity or value of human life. And we, the democracies of the world, must come together to defeat it and eradicate it. This is not a battle between the United States of America and terrorism.